Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. While I have a whole list of topics I want to talk about, and the list is getting longer, I spent all day yesterday thinking about MUDs, so I just jumped it to the top of the queue, and I want to talk about MUDs today. For those of you who don't know, MUD stands for Multi-User Dungeon. It was something that started decades ago, I want to say early 80s. It was a text based multiplayer game. Think Zork or any Infocom game. Very similar, you know, a description of a room, things you see. You can type in text responses like pick up sword or attack monster. But other people were playing as well. Usually, I think they topped out at a few dozen, but I know later on it was hundreds if not thousands. So you could be standing in a room and suddenly it would say, you know, Bob enters the room. Like, say, hello, Bob. And Bob would be like, let's go adventure. And yes, there were puzzles and muds that required more than one person, which is which is what like sparked my mind about, I want to do this. So in the late 80s, it was either late 88 or early 1989, I'd been at UCI for a couple of years, um, University of California, Irvine. I had my master's, I was working on my PhD, and I discovered muds. There were a few online, and this is back when the internet was called ARPANET, and pretty much the only thing you could get to were other universities. There were a few MUDs online, and I'd go in and play with them. Finally, a, f a friend of mine and I, we made our own. We uh, we didn't make it. We he, he, he grabbed a MUD. It was called LP MUD. Lars Pensk had made a version of MUD packaged up, pretty easy to grab and use. So we made an LP MUD. It was called Winter Mute. I believe that's after a character in the second Amber Quintology. The one's about Merlin, not about Corwin. It came with a default area, like a default village with a pub and a church and a general store and a jail. Kind of just generic. And a few uh, extra areas um, that came with it. The way it worked was you, you you were a player, and then when you hit level 20, you could get promoted to wizard. And then a wizard could actually make new areas by coding them in a very C-like language, which is perfect because I knew C. So we played around in Winter Mute. I got to level 20, got promoted to wizard. My character's name was Fred. It was very interesting because later on in Fallout, my assistant producer was named Fred. And you're given an inflatable castle that you put somewhere in the world and it explodes and then you have to design it. So I made Castle Fred high atop Fred Mountain. Even then I'm super good at naming things. And I filled it with all kinds of fun stuff. There was a whole set of dungeons under it. Some of the dungeons led to other dimensions. I made a copy of Fred Mountain and Castle Fred and put an evil Fred in there. And many players who went through thought it was me because it didn't say evil Fred. It just said Fred. But he was evil and he would attack them. And then they were running around yelling, the wizard Fred is attacking me. Because you could shout to the whole zone. Interestingly, I made a post-apocalyptic world. And it wasn't accessible like the other dimensions were through a gate in the dungeons of Castle Fred. The way it worked was I made a, a nuclear weapon, a bomb you could find. But if you press the button, it said this is only activatable in the town square. So you'd have to go back to the town square. And what I did is I made an entire duplicate of the starting zone. But all the descriptions were changed to make it look post-apocalyptic. So the pub was burned and the church was in ruins and the jail, you know, all the bars were melted. And what would happen was people would find this bomb, try to make it go off and it said, you have to be in the town square. They go to the town square and they blow up and it would give them, you know, you a huge explosion, mushroom cloud, miraculously you survived but they'd look around and the town square was in ruins and the village was in ruins and inevitably they would shout to the zone i'm sorry i destroyed the starting village and everybody would laugh and tell them they were actually in another area the other fun item i remember making which is important to the story i want to tell is the ronco monster succomatic this is a little device that could be set to suck or spew the way it worked is if you ran up to a monster and before it started attacking, you could say suck monster and it would put it into the Ronco suck -O -Matic. 
and you could look at it in there through a little window. It could only hold one, so once you had sucked in a monster, you couldn't do any more. You could take it somewhere and hit change the setting to spew, and the monster would come out, and it would be angry, and the first thing it would do is attack you and everybody else in the room. So, of course, players started finding the worst monsters in the game. Another wizard had made a Terminator. It walked around his zone saying, are you Sarah Connor, and then shooting you. People would suck the Terminator in, go back to the pub in the main starting zone, and spew him out. Yes, it would attack the person, but it would also attack all the newbies that were in there. And it was like, ha, ha, ha. They put dragons in there and all kinds of things. Finally, um, I made it so it obeyed properties of the room. So you could make rooms that the Ronco Succomatic wouldn't work in. And then it would say it, it's jammed or something and doesn't work. This is why that's important. So we played with Wintermute for about six months. We lost interest in it. But there were two wizards in our world who were coming in from a Texas university. I think it was Texas A&M. And they were really good. And they started their own LP mud called Darker Realms. Their names were Raceland and Lucifer. And they asked if they could take my inflatable castle there, um, Castle Fred on Fred Mountain. I said, sure. I bundled it up and I let them have it. Apparently, Fred Mountain is still floating around out there and it still is in some muds. Um, anyway, they put it in Darker Realms and it was popular. Uh, there were some other ones that were much better written and themed. Mine was a little all over the place. But what's funny is Lucifer was very kind of a dour kind of guy. Uh, very maudlin. Very not like me. So I would play with him. I would do things to try to make him laugh. And one of them was I would grab my monster succomatic and I'd go grab things from the realm and put them in his wizard workroom. So yeah, I put the Terminator in there once. So when he logged in as a wizard, the first thing you do is appear in your workroom. And the first thing that happened is it would be like, are you Sarah Connor? And it would start shooting him. Now, wizards can't be killed. Although when I looked at the code for that, they only protected the damage function. The heal function could work on wizards. And it took a signed integer. So at one point, I showed Raceland a wand of healing I made that could shoot out negative healing. And I showed it to him by negative healing his wizard to death. I got in trouble for that. And they wrapped the healing function in a wrap or two to make it not apply to wizards. But I digress. So I would leave things in Lucifer's workroom. One of the other wizards had made a glacial plateau with shaggy cows on them called snow cows that would occasionally go moo. But if you stayed there long enough, one of them would suddenly go moo. Moo, I say. I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. So I would often leave a snow cow or perhaps a herd of snow cows in Lucifer's workroom until finally he not only wrapped it in the uh, property that I'd made so that the Ronco wouldn't work there, he eventually banned me and made it so I couldn't go in his workroom anymore. The funny thing is, Raceland was so good. I mean, I looked at their code. I would look at these other wizards' code. He was a good coder. This is about the time I had finished Rags to Riches and I was making my own engines. I told him what I was doing, and he said that sounded really fascinating, and he was really interested in 3D. We needed a programmer for Starfleet Academy. And I had the Jay Patel, our technical director, do a phone interview with Raceland, whose real name was John Price. He did so well on it that they flew him out. I met him at John Wayne Airport. This is back when you could go to the gate. And I had a little sign, I think it said Raceland. Met him at the gate, first time he and I had ever met in real life. Took him to Interplay. He had an interview. Knocked it out of the park. He got hired. He was the programmer on Starfleet Academy. His 3D engine, way better than my 3D engine. That's why Fallout's a sprite-based game and Starfleet's 3D. He actually wrote a scripting language for Starfleet that we ended up using in Fallout. But he would tell people the stories of our mud days. And I, I told people about these stories, too. And I think it was Chris Taylor our lead designer on Fallout, who 
thought it was super funny. And since we had Brahmin, that is why in Fallout, occasionally, I think it's in one spot, but I'm not sure. There's a Brahmin herd and one of the Brahmin will go, Moo. Moo, I say, because it's a callback to LP Mondays. By the way, one lesson to learn from this very dumb story. Your creativity will come from all kinds of places. Yes, I had a busy day. Graduate studies can fill your day. I still spend a few hours every night playing around in LP months. It's Creativity is not something that <clears throat> has to be confined to something you do professional or hobby. It can come from anything, anywhere. Tabletop, muds, <clears throat> and it's not a nine to five thing. I applaud all the efforts to make work-life balance better for game developers, and I agree with that goal. I'm just going to say right now, <clears throat> excuse me, I do not think that any creative profession, whether you're an artist, writer, game designer, can be fit in nine to five. You're going to have a lot of ideas outside of those hours. And for any producer that thinks they can fit them in a nine to five and schedule creative ideas, you're going to be unhappy. In fact, that could probably be a whole video itself about passion and work-life balance. and But that's not this video. Anyway, I just want to talk about mods. Have a good day.